Good morning. I'd like to start this morning by wishing you a happy Mother's Day, if that's an appropriate wish. And if not, then I wish you a day filled with peace and contentment. You know, I don't usually use my guitar when I give a message. In fact, it's been almost two and a half years since I've done that. But I watched a video this week. It was a video of a young music teacher. I think she's from Chicago, maybe. I don't know. And she wrote a song about how this virus is affecting us as a society and as individuals. And when I heard it, I was quite, quite surprised at my reaction. And I gave it a lot of thought. And there were a couple times this week I thought about that song and I actually sang that song. And both times I felt better. So I thought maybe I'd share it with you this morning. <laughs> sing that song at home. Probably shouldn't sing it in the checkout line at Safeway, but maybe at home you might find you feel better. Okay. I've entitled my message this morning, Moving Forward. And that's something that we're all going to be required to do. But I got the title from a sentence. It was the last sentence that FDR ever wrote by hand. He wrote it on the morning of his death. He was preparing a speech to give in San Francisco a couple weeks later. And that group in San Francisco was meeting to begin organizing and creating the United Nations. And that last sentence, and I'm going to have to paraphrase because I didn't write it down, but that last sentence went something like this. Here we are. We're in a world that's filled with grief and sadness. Grief and sadness for all the death that has occurred, for all the disparity, and all the destruction that has happened throughout our world. But we must move forward past that grief and sadness. We must move forward to, to create a condition of peace and prosperity throughout our world. You know, I've talked a lot recently about creating a new normal. Where do we go from here? Well, to create anything, we have to move forward. I've talked over and over again about going forward with a consciousness of we, for the good of the whole. And what does that consciousness create in reality? It creates a thing called harmony. As we create this new normal, we can, we must create a world that lives together in harmony, in harmony with each other, in harmony with nature and our planet and their universe. As we begin that process, 
I'd like to remind us of Gandhi's quote that we've all heard, become the change you want to see in the world. So if we use that quote, become the harmony we want to see in the world. Do you live in a consciousness of harmony? In your mind? In your home? It's a good place to start. I re recently watched a Netflix series put on by a young lady named Marie Kondo, K-O-N-D-O. She's a Japanese lady. In fact, she was one of the speakers on the call to unite last week. And she is a organizing consultant. Her series is called Tidying Up. And she helps people tidy up their homes, organize their homes. She's written several books on this particular subject. And she has a very interesting concept in consciousness in doing so. When she goes into a home, she gets the residents of the home and they all get on their knees on the floor. And the first thing they do is give thanks to their home for providing shelter and safety and privacy. Then the next step she usually takes is let's organize and tidy up our closets, our clothes. And she asks everybody to bring all of your clothes out of your closet, your drawers, your boxes, your shelves, and pile them on the bed. And without exception, the reaction is, oh my God, I never realized I had so much clothing. And then she suggests that you go through it piece at a time and save the pieces of clothing that give you what she calls a spark of joy. What you enjoy wearing. What makes you feel good to wear. And people start off kind of not knowing. But she said, Pick out something that you know is favorite, you really enjoy, and thank it for give. I thank that shirt or that jacket for giving you joy, being a spark of joy in your life, and put it in one pile. Then pick something that you've had forever and haven't worn, and it doesn't particularly give you a spark of joy, and you'll probably never wear it again and put it in the pile to go to Goodwill or one of the thrift stores. But as you do, thank that piece of clothing for giving you the service that it did, for serving, serving you. And all through this entire process, it's all about expressing gratitude. And with every piece of clothing and everything else that she goes through, you ask yourself the question, do I want this to accompany me in the organized, intentioned life that I'm going to live from here on? And it's amazing. It's difficult at first, but it's amazing. She goes through clothing first, then books. All these books, pile them up in a big pile, all of them, every one. Is this something I want to carry forward in my life? Will it give me joy and wisdom as I go forward? Or is it just something that I had? And, and do that process in the kitchen with all of the things on your shelves, in your drawers, in the boxes. So often we get sentiment involved in a lot of things that actually distract us or hold us back from our intention.
Give thanks and release. Give thanks and release. Give thanks and take it with you in your intention to create a home filled with harmony, with joy, all the things that give us that spark of joy. And it's amazing what you wind up with going to Goodwill. And I couldn't help but think as I watched these, these different examples of people tidying up, all of the stuff we have that we don't use, we don't need, we won't use. And I couldn't help but think, gosh, how much of that stuff did we just buy? And when I think about harmony in our plant, how much of that, what's the carbon footprint on all that stuff? Everything has a carbon footprint. All those clothes that we just kind of bought and used a couple times, and nah. Every one of those probably was made by some child in a sweatshop in some third world company, country working for a few cents an hour. It's not minimalization, especially. It's being very clear on your intention, being very clear on, on what you want to take with you on this journey forward. As I think about my house, it's like, that's when I sang my song, almost overwhelming. But if you just start, don't push, but just start and begin. You'll be surprised that the joy you have in your, in your mind and in your heart as you see your closet without stuff all stacked up on the floors, when you open your drawers and they're all neat and tidy and organized, you feel better about yourself. There's harmony in your home instead of distractions and Ah, all this stuff. And I further think about this practice of giving thanks and releasing. Maybe that, that same kind of concept could spread over into your relationships. Maybe those relationships no longer serve you or, or won't serve you in the path you choose going forward. Maybe it's time to give thanks for what that relationship brought into your life at that time. But maybe it's time to release it. Maybe it's time to intentionally begin new relationships that create a spark of joy in your life. And then again, what about inside your head, your thoughts, your beliefs, your habits? What of those no longer serve us well? What habits no longer serve us well? What beliefs, they had a purpose at one point. But if, are those thoughts and habits and beliefs something you want to carry forward in creating a new normal, in creating a condition in our world that is filled with peace and prosperity and harmony? I think we could all learn some valuable lessons from Marie Kondo. In organizing our world, in tidying up, tidying up our thoughts and our homes, even our cars. In tidying up some of our thoughts and beliefs. And create a home and an environment in our own little place that has tranquility and peace and prosperity and harmony. And 
then give thanks for that first step of creating a new normal, creating a new future for ourselves, our community, and for humanity. You might even find you want to sing that song once in a while. It'll make you feel better. And so it is.